Yeah. We back. salt came in today all right so new viewers water change Wednesday water change Wednesday you ask me a question out below the video and I'll answer it there and I try to answer it here I wanted to mention about the reef tanks around the world we're getting some submissions and it's awesome <laughs> What I wanted to say is it's not about how perfect your tank is, guys. You know, a lot of stuff out there are these, you know, SPS dominated, perfect aquariums. And that's not what this is all about. You know, get your tank looking as good as it can look and submit your reef tank. It'll be really cool. The one thing I did want to add is you can take a little more video footage then the five to 10 seconds, take a little bit more, do multiples of each of your corals that you have in there, some of your setup, and what I think the best way to submit them is if you use Google Docs or some form of a link from my email that I gave you, which is tomreefer1 at gmail.com, and give me a link so I can go in and download all your videos and images. Keep everything to videos. All right, so let's get right into Water Change Wednesday right now. First question, JK Turtle. Hey Tom, how do you manage to get rid of the oily film on the top surface layer of your tank? And in my case, he was asking about the five gallon because it's very small. That's what the Skim 350 was for. What you need to do to get rid of that film that's on the top of your tank is to have some form of overflow skimming box. So if you have an overflow box or compartments in the back, your overflow works as the skimmer box. But if you don't have that, you need some sort of pump, small pump like the Skim 350 that'll draw the water down in off the surface. It kind of filters it through a small sponge and then it keeps that water clear on the top. So that's what you have to do to get rid of the film on the top of your wall. JD Aquariums, he's currently running a Marineland HOB filter with floss and a bag of Chemipure. He doesn't have an overflow box or a skimmer and he wants some suggestions on how we should move forward. And he wants me to shout out New Jersey because he's located here too. Let's shout out New Jersey. So what I would do, if you have a 10 gallon, that's just like mine right here on the left. You don't need an overflow box uh, and you don't need an HOB filter. You could just start the tank with water changes alone maintain a reef tank. However, you may want to invest in a small skimmer, which is helpful. And that question I just answered about the surface skimming, that can be an issue when you don't have an overflow box. So you may want to get a small skim 350 to draw the water down and keep your surface water clear. And then that turns the water over also. So that's what I would recommend, but you can go slow. Start with nothing at all. You'd probably have to do weekly water changes in that case, and then see how it goes for four to six weeks, and then maybe add a skimmer and see if your surface water is becoming a problem. If it really has a film on there, then you're gonna have to do something about that because that can 
restrict oxygenation with the surface and the air, and you want to get rid of that. Not too many questions this week, guys. Hmm. What's wrong with me? I don't know. All right, this cheered me up a little bit. Volatile Reefer laughed because he saw me up on the furniture with my sneakers on, my shoes on, in last week's video. And when my wife's around, I would never do that. She'd kill me, and he was laughing. He said the same thing, that his wife would never allow him to do that. So anyway, there was another... Let me see, maybe I can find it. Hold on. Oh, here it is. You're breathtaking, says... Uh... By the way, why do you Americans always wear shoes in the house? Do you guys even wear shoes while in quarantine, lol? I take my shoes off when I come in here with But when I'm up on top of that cabinet, I don't want to slide off with socks and kill myself. Mike mentioned that his flower rock anemones ate a couple of his fish. I had mentioned in Wednesday's video that there's no problem, that they're not aggressive. And mine, that's been the case. I had three fish in there that swam around. I had the shrimp who climbs on it. They don't really attempt to even close up. So in his experience, he had some issues with them eating fish. He went in there at night with a flashlight and saw that the thing was inside the anemone. So I don't know whether it was a really large one or particular types of flower rock anemones will eat fish, but uh, his did. So just be aware of that. Nothing's guaranteed on the Tom Reefer channel, except certain things that I'll say I'm guaranteed. A few viewers had opposing scenarios with the uh, sand sifting gobies and bottom dwellers. They Lee's got some jawfish. He says, I have two pearly jawfish, which are bottom dwellers and really like to jump. So yeah, you know, there is certain cases, guys, fish are gonna jump. There's always an opposite side to the story in reef keeping. What one person says that will work fine, someone else says it doesn't. And I'm just pointing it out because in my experience, my goby. It never goes up more than a few inches. Now there are, might be another goby who's super hungry and maybe, you know, whatever. And he'll go up and jump out of the tank. So, I, you know, that's just the way it is. Vincent had a good question. This has always concerned me in the past. He has a long distance to get to a LFS, and the LFS that he gets his corals and fish from uh, have red slime in the tanks, cyanobacteria. And he wanted to know if he picks some coral up and brings it home and puts it into his tank, can it spread in his tank? And I said, well, yeah, it can. But to combat that, what you can do is rinse it off in some fresh salt water when you get home. You know, make sure it's temperature acclimated to your tank. You can brush it off if it's really on there a little bit with a small toothbrush or something. And you can do a coral dip. Uh, at that point, it's really up to your tank's parameters. If you have really good parameters, you know, good pH, DKH, low nitrate, low phosphate, then it won't get a chance to grow. Cyanobacteria needs nutrients to grow. Air Bottom Reef says, Tom, let's be honest. You and I both know that it's time for a 55 gallon display and a 40 gallon breeder sump. Well guys, the thought has crossed my mind to go up in tank size because these are getting really overcrowded. I just don't want to lose all that I have 
in the 20 and move it into something else. When you do that, it's not like starting a tank over, but you'll see that it won't be what this looks like because you're putting it in a brand new environment. You know, this is kind of connected to everything. It's I'll have to do something eventually. I can't do anything else in here except go larger. So maybe in the future, you know, I'll have to do that. I wanted to come back to the reef tanks around the world. Don't worry about the quality of your tank. If you have hair algae or some unwanted algae, try to make it look really nice. But it's not about these perfect tanks that we see out there. This is Tom Reefer channel. It's about learning and real life situation. You know, a lot of those nice tanks are only nice for the video. I love nice tanks. Send nice ones if you guys are more advanced. Really what makes a nice tank is age. So a lot of you guys who are just starting out, you know, you're not gonna have these full flourishing tanks yet because you're just starting. Send them to Google Docs, send a link to my email. That's the easiest rather than try to email all the files. That's gotta do it for tonight. I felt a little rush tonight. I don't know if you caught that at all. I was late today, but have a great rest of the evening. And remember, submit your tanks. Slow, maybe 10, 15 second videos of each coral. 